all the PCM talks that have occurred prior to this one, uh, both yesterday and this morning. Um, this represents the work of a, a large group of individuals. Um, I'm a molecular geneticist from the University of Idaho, more closely with Maurice Marine on, on a number of PCM-related projects. Uh, the talk today uh, also used uh, information and collaboration with USDA Aberdeen uh, from Dr. Rich Noby and Dr. Linda Whitworth, um, USDA Corvallis with Linda Sagata, and Walter Dujami and Xiaohong Wang, um, USDA Ithaca and Cornell University. So uh, this has been introduced, but uh, interest in, in, in Globidera species in the U.S. focuses on uh, Globidera palate and tail cyst nematode, um, Globidera rock stockiensis golden cyst nematode, uh, and uh, third species here, uh, Globidera elantonii. Um, there's no common name yet, I believe, for this, this one. Um, I want to highlight that these, these photos came Marine Mandaran, Inga Sazada, and Xiao Hong Wang are collaborators in Idaho, Oregon, and in New York. So, briefly, uh, Golden Cyst Nematode, a quarantine pest, was uh, first identified symptoms in, in the late 1930s and positive identification occurring in the early 1940s. Carmen is still with unfortunately. Um, the pale cyst nematode, uh, another quarantine pest, was identified in Idaho in uh, 2006, and Ellen Tony and I shortly thereafter in Idaho and Oregon, um, and is, is not a, a quarantine pest, but uh, because of its relationship to uh, the first two, um, this is one we want to keep our eye on. Uh, plan ahead for. So these objectives uh, don't directly relate to my talk in the sense that they are the objectives for a much larger uh, project and program related to developing PCM resistance um, for cultivars in the U.S. And uh, in particular, uh, we're interested in developing uh, long type russet uh, varieties that have uh, broad spectrum uh, resistance to uh, multiple globular species, specifically a golden cyst, and pale cyst, and elantonia. Um, the, the focus of this talk is the use of molecular markers as previously published, prim primarily from European groups that might assist in this breeding effort to develop these oblong russets uh, with nematode <laughs> resistance. Along those same lines, uh, much of the resistant material that is being utilized by breeders in the U.S. has uh, origins in uh, Europe and uh, related uh, countries. Although we are continuing to look for more. So, what is the state of uh, PCN resistance for uh, uh, cis nematodes? Well, there's, there's about 14 loci on eight different chromosomes and derived from a wide range of different uh, uh, species. Um, I just want to highlight one in particular resistance gene for the golden cis nematode, H1, has been around for many years and provides resistance to uh, pathotypes R01 and R4, and it is a high level uh, resistance uh, due to a single gene and a major dominant locus. Uh, I think uh, the talk following mine, uh, presented by Rich Noby, will mention um, H1 again and provide reference to the contribution of the H1 gene to resistance to Elantonia. 
So uh, pale cyst nematode, uh, resistance loci are a little bit more elusive. Um, as indicated here, uh, resistance tends to be polygenic, that is a single locus is going to contribute partial resistance and therefore one needs to combine multiple loci to increase resistance levels to an acceptable uh, amount. Uh, in particular, I'll be talking about this GK5 locus on chromosome 5 and GPOF4 ADG uh, uh, locus on uh, chromosome 4. Uh, other genes are also going to be mentioned in the talk today. Uh, and again, as I said, that because the resistance to pallida tends to be polygenic and quantitative, um, there is uh, the need to uh, stack or pyramid these genes together to increase resistance level. And so this is a results uh, a graph from Dalton et al. And this shows that uh, levels with no QTLs, uh, the GPOF4, I apologize that you probably cannot quite read this, this is GPOF4 ADG alone, uh, GPOF5 alone, and the combination of GPOF4 ADG and GPOF5 uh, gives this, this high, higher level of resistance than the Heber loci alone. So, uh, the material that I'm going to be presenting on is material that I received from Dr. Rich Noby and Jonathan Whitworth at, with the USDA ARS at, uh, Aberdeen Potato Breeding Program. Um, some of this material has been in the program for, for a longer period of time and, and others have been more recently acquired uh, since the, uh, the Global CAP project uh, began a few years ago. Um, so we have material from Europe, particularly Holland and in the UK. Uh, material was received in from, from New Zealand, um, from South America, specifically Peru, and, the, and the cultivar Maria Wonka, and uh, Cornell University. Uh, I'll get into this a little bit more, but it was just introduced, has had a, a, a breeding program for many decades now, uh, focused on golden cyst nematode, however, um, there's been some broader efforts made uh, in the last few decades uh, for pallida as well. Um, this is a list of more recently received uh, material um, from the Dutch. Uh, quite a few lines here that have incorporated uh, PCM resistance. Um, another Dutch line that's widely uh, used today. Uh, it's a couple uh, German lines and a uh, line from uh, Europe, France, Germany. I uh, just do want to mention that uh, the, the cultivars that are showing up in red are not uh, specifically mentioned in the talk today because uh, they were not available for the marker screen that, that I'm showing. I will also uh, briefly mention two different uh, populations, depending on how you want to count. Uh, the first population generated uh, in uh, Aberdeen, Idaho, is the Eden uh, resistant line by the susceptible Western Russet uh, family name A10915. In total, uh, approximately 234 progeny have been screened with the uh, potato snip chip. Three. However, I will not be presenting uh, those results today. I'm presenting a small number of progeny, uh, 10 to 15, uh, with this set of uh, resistance markers. Uh, resistance from, uh, in Eden is derived from sodium tuberose and subspecies indigena. So there are three additional populations I'm going to be briefly mentioning, um, and these were generated by uh, Bill Brody, Robert Flaxton, and Maria Skura and was a collaborative project uh, between Cornell University and the International Potato Center back in the 80s and carried on through the 90s. And you can see that there was a, a series of pubs here uh, mentioning this work and describing the development of uh, these three populations. 
uh, the collaborative work was such that the uh, uh, globular palliative uh, screening was conducted in Peru and uh, globular rock softenesses uh, screening was done in New York State. Um, and populations are now available with uh, the germplasm repository in Sturgeon Bay. Yeah, resistance in these three populations was derived from subspecies in Vigia and Burma. So the markers that I'm including in today's talk, uh, the H1 locus providing resistance to R1 and R4 uh, from Indigena, and the marker used is uh, Pitocin norm. We also use another marker, uh, briefly TP489, um, but was more comfortable with there's a, a GRO1-4 uh, resistant allele uh, providing resistance to pathotype R01. And uh, oh, just so real quick, uh, if you're not familiar with the terminology, GRO standing for Rostock Dances and PA standing for Pallida. Um, but the GRO1-4 locus derived from uh, Salam spike, uh, spike density and is uh, tracked with this scar marker. GPAW 480G resistance to palette of 2 slash 3 from indigena uh, marker contour 237 on chromosome 4. Now, what you'll note next is that there's a whole series of three markers um, HC spike 5000 spike 1636 that are tracking resistance from Salam and Bernie and uh, differentially noted, uh, noted here as either GPAW. Because of the different uh, studies that have occurred over the years. Uh, the most recent one, uh, uh, communication with Walter DeJong at Cornell University, where uh, he's associated the spike 5000 marker with row 2 resistance and uh, palette of 2 slash 3 uh, resistance. And then the last marker I'm using is, is this 221R associated with the GPAW 2 gene on chromosome. So uh, the markers vary in different types and shapes and sizes. Uh, this is just an example of presence absence uh, score for the H1 gene using the 57R uh, primer set, and you can easily score presence and absence of H1 in, in a segregating population. Uh, for GPAW4 on chromosome 4, we use this CONTIC 237, uh, which is an amplified PCR product that then is sequenced and if you look right here, you can see that Western Russet is, uh, only shows the presence of an A peak, whereas Eden with resistance from GPAW4 shows a slight T overlaying peak with the A, uh, indicating the presence of the uh, contact 237 marker. And so these are some of the results that I'm just gonna highlight various um, outcomes. Yeah, but I, I want to caution people that uh, the results I'm showing here are indicating uh, the presence and absence of the markers, not necessarily the presence and absence of the resistance. That's a different set of, of work that will have to be presented another time, although Rich will get into that in the talk following mine. So two UK lines, Eden and Nicola, uh, both carry the, the H1 locus and the key. Or, uh, notably absent is the, the salamoverneide resistance on chromosome 5. They also have the GPA2 uh, marker on, on chromosome 12. Um, so a whole bunch of uh, Dutch and German cultivars. Um, kind of interesting that, that this material, even though more recently generated, um, there's this few spattering uh, presence of H1 um, but I, I would expect to see more cultivars with H1. Um, and none of this material is carrying the, the uh, GPA4 locus from Andigena. Now there is a, a wide presence of the GPA5 locus and the larger region on chromosome 5 associated with these three markers. Uh, two of the, the cultivars, Arsenal and Former, have all three markers across this HC. The, the row two and the uh, spike 1636. Uh, and 
And you'll note that uh, producent ha uh, is lacking the HD marker, but has the, the other two. Um, and then there's, there's a, a variation for the DuPont 2 marker. Now, these are the two lines from New Zealand, mainly in Bondi. And as you can see, that the, these lines are relying on resistance from the DuPont 4 locus on chromosome 4, uh, moonlight also carrying the H1 and, and the DuPont 2. And so th this was kind of thrown in as, a, as an outlier, if you will, of the Peruvian cultivar Mineral Mantra, um, indicating that it's carrying a resistance from Slam Bernie ion chromosome 5, as well as the DuPont 2 mark. <coughs> So um, I'm gonna quickly uh, skip over this population for me, 10915, in part because Richard will be listening more about it. And uh, just real quick comment about the New York W population, 69, 72, 73, that resistance is primarily coming from Salam Bernii on chromosome five, although there's obviously some segregation among individuals in this population. Uh, and that that resistance has carried over to New York 121, which was widely derived from uh, this material. So conclusions, uh, only a few cultivars uh, combine the, the slam and burning eye resistance on chromosome five and the antigenous resistance on chromosome four. Uh, Tokyo is one exception. Uh, markers on chromosome five suggests that uh, SPLIC 5000 is possibly in between the HC and SPLIC 636 marker. A few cultivars had all three loci or marker loci for uh, resistance on chromosome 5 and the uh, New York uh, NYW populations carried primarily Bernier resistance according to these markers. And uh, I, I'll say that the phenotypic responses need to be correlated with these uh, markers results. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, a wide number of individuals in my lab that conducted the uh, PCR and sequencing and as well as the PIs and the other groups in the two major funding sources for this work. So, sorry, I ran a little long. 